Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. It is always great to have you on the program. Good and evening. today, as we're getting these headlines and finding out about some of those failures today, the House passed a bill yeah. to ensure that candidates running for president will get the same protection that the sitting president is getting. It passed 405 to 0. 26 members were absent. Um, clearly, you guys are working on this. But when I read yep. these headlines, I've got to shake my head. Yeah, no, the bill was good. I mean, and, and it's good to see something with bipartisan support where we think, you know, if you're running for president of the United States, uh, you need the same kind of protection that the president of the United States has. So good piece of legislation. President Trump commended the Secret Service for their work last Sunday in the in the uh, terrible situation down there in, in, in Miami and in, in Florida or Palm Beach, I should say. So uh, that's all good. And then the task force is working on this as well. But I will tell you one thing that concerns me particularly about what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania two months ago is after the assassination attempt on President Trump, the Secret Service wasn't square with us and neither was mm. Secretary Mayorkas. Because remember, they told us 24 hours after that attack, they said it's absolutely false that we in any way deny President Trump's security detail the resources they asked for. And then five days later, they said, well, there were occasions where they asked for things that we didn't give to them. Right. So it couldn't be both. So the fact that they lied to us, I think is problematic, too, and something that we need to get to the bottom of on this uh, on this task force that's been put together by the speaker. Well, and that brings up the issue, Congressman, of consequences, accountability. I'm hearing words now like complacency and lack of diligence. That sounds like apathy. What happens? What, what are the consequences of complacency with the former president of the United States and his life on the line? Right now, all I've yeah. heard about is people getting desk jobs. That can't be yeah. it. No, that can't be it when you're talking about the fact that former President Trump, the Republican nominee, almost lost his life in Butler, Pennsylvania. I mean, for goodness sake, let's let's but let's wait and get to see what the task force comes up with, see what the facts they unveil, the information in their report that they're so, that they're supposed to get to the Congress, get to the country by mid-December. So let's see what they what they uncover. What I do know is how they started the day after. The spokesperson for the Secret Service said it's absolutely false that we didn't give them what they asked for. Secretary Mayorkas said the exact same thing. And those two statements within 48 hours after an attempt on the president's life, President Trump's life, where someone else, Corey Comprator, lost his life, where two other Americans were injured, those statements were false. They lied to we, the people, the very people they're supposed to serve. So they didn't get off on a good start. Let's see how this unfolds and see what the task force does. But the good news is, President Trump, by the grace of the good Lord, wasn't hurt in either attempt, and we passed this legislation today that will give enhanced protection to the president. Congressman, I want to follow on that because I think a lot of people are wondering why President Trump, former President Trump, wasn't given immediate more protection as if he were a sitting president immediately after July 13. Why did it take so long? Great question. We need to get the answer to that. More importantly, the American people need to know the answer to that. I mean, he was former president. I think he's going to be our next president. Everyone knew he was the nominee. He's out campaigning in, in a, a critical state, of course. Um, why not? And then you couple it with all the things that have been said about him, all the attacks, all the ridiculous things that the left has said about President Trump uh, in that environment. You would have thought there would have been the protection that was needed or at least what his detail asked for, which they were turned down. So th th that, I think, again, that should be a key focus of the task force, not to mention what happened on the ground in Butler, what happened on the ground in Palm Beach, um, uh, you know, what things that could have been do done different with the, the security, securing the, the rooftops of the buildings in Butler and all those questions there. But just the fact that it wasn't where it needed to be and, they were, and he, his detail asked for it and he wasn't given that, I think mm. is a big question. Congressman, illegal immigration continues to make headlines. Both the candidates are talking about it, um, and it's a top issue for voters as we head into November. Specifically speaking from your home state in Ohio, you've been inundated. A couple of stats here. Uh, the state has set aside $2.5 million for two years of health care for said illegal immigrants in Springfield, which has been a hot topic city um, as of late. The school district there now has to spend 10 times what it was spending before to make sure that that the allocations are there to help people who yeah. have come into this country illegally. Your response to that, this is not just a southern, you know, southern state issue no, anymore. It has come to a city and state near you. 
Yeah, it's everywhere. And this is what happens when you deliberately and intentionally on day one decide no more wall, no more remain in Mexico. When you get to the border, you will not be detained. You will be released. 10 million migrants have entered the country. 99 of those individuals released in the country were on the terrorist watch list. And then you add on top of that this t temporary protective status program, which allowed in the Haitians and Venezuelans and all these at these record numbers that the Biden administration, the Harris administration decided to do. And you get these concerns. You get health care concerns in your community, concerns for your education system, uh, the housing market concerns, all kinds of concerns. And it all kind of manifests and boiled up in Springfield, Ohio, mm. where 15,000 Haitians came into a community of 55,000 in a two and a half year time frame. Of course, you're going to have problems, but it's directly attributable to the deliberate decisions this administration made on day one. And I think it's going to be front and center on voters' minds when they start to vote here in a couple days in some states mm. and on the election on November 5th. Absolutely. Congressman Jim Jordan, great to see you. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. You bet. Thank you.